Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sundance Film Festival Beyond Film discussion for South Carolina and North Carolina. My name is Curtis Caesar John, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Luminal Theater. We partnered with the Sundance Film Festival to screen films and provide locally produced and flavored content for the Carolinas. And tonight's discussion is the first of our conversations on the arts in the region. Now, when we talk about defining and redefining Carolina film, we're attempting to examine the aesthetics, the history, and more, and how all these things inform how and why we create. And I have to say, we couldn't be more proud than to have this array of talented creatives to help us get this conversation started. And I'm going to bring them all in once by one, one by one, and just want you to say who you are, where you're from, or what city are you in, and what creativity, what art are you repping? And we're going to start with Andrew. I'm Andrew Gavinar. I'm a PGA. I live in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm the executive director of Carolina Film Network, and I am also a film producer. Cool. Thank you. Eric. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, everybody. I'm Eric Johnson with Trailblazer Studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. I oversee the music and sound department and uh, oversee our engagement, uh, which is building connections with, with the community, whatever community that is. Thank you, Eric. Angie. Hey, I am uh, Tangi uh, Brickhouse Beatty. I am originally from Connecticut, but I am a transplant here in Columbia, South Carolina. I am the owner and founder of Wild Productions, the executive director of Wild Performing Arts Center, and the owner uh, of a casting company named Brickbeat Agency. Thank you, Tandry. Bruce. Hey, my name is Bruce Francis Cole. Uh, I'm a cinematographer um, from Durham, North Carolina. Um, I spent a little bit of time in LA and New York, but I eventually moved back to North Carolina I want to say probably about four years ago. Um, Sundance alumni of 2020 had a film there, uh, Farewell Lamore. And uh, yeah, I'm just actually residing in Durham and uh, shooting. Thank you, Bruce. Farewell Lamore is a fantastic film. We're going to obviously talk about your work and all that and more in the future. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for joining. Uh, Ronnie. Oops. Peace, everybody. I'm Ronnie Nicole Henderson Day. I'm coming to you live and direct from Hopkins, South Carolina, in the sticks. Um, I was born in Dayton, Ohio, raised there as well. Um, but I'm back for my second time um, living in South Carolina. Um, I lived here as a child, so I consider it a, a second home as well. Um, let's see. My art I bring to the world um, through movement. Uh, camera and and people's black bodies um, as a means of resisting the narrative that we down bad. <laughs> so um, I make resistance films. I make films about um, spirit surviving. That's, that's, that's it. Cool. Obviously, we're going to get into much more of that. Uh, Travis Pearson. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Travis Pearson. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I grew up in California, but my family, all my family's here. Um, I'm a filmmaker, local filmmaker as well as I also uh, do a lot of activism work through my uh, social media, uh, media, uh, the Black Collective. Uh, we've been doing that, you know, going on six years now. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. See, I didn't know you're from California. That's why well, you're so laid back and cool and all that. So that, that, <laughs> that adds right there. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Dominic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Good. My name is Dominic Santana, and I am an actor, and I'm also a writer, uh, as well as a producer. I'm co-owner of Polymark Entertainment out of LA and Santana Hall Productions here in North Carolina. I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, and currently I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, shooting on a show called Hightown. Shooting what film? I thought uh, it's a TV show called Hightown. Oh, Hightown. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. 
And, and what what film before we because we're gonna get deep very deep in conversation. So like, mm -hmm. um, what film would probably people know you best from? Uh, currently, right now, from portraying the Shit Night and uh, All Eyes on Me, I uh, went to theaters, and then uh, I followed that up with uh, Unsolved, where I played the role again. Uh, so that's what people seem to <laughs> know me as. My nickname is <laughs> Become Shug, and uh, <laughs> regrettably, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> positives and negatives, right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. We lost one of our speakers, uh, so we're just gonna get right into the conversation. Um, oh, actually, he's coming right back in. So hang on a second. Oliver, are you with us? Uh, he seems to be having some connectivity. Oh no, here he goes. All right, Oliver. Oliver, are you there? Oh, I'm just gonna. Oh, here we go. Oh, maybe not. Yes. Okay, there we go. Hey, man. Uh, hey, okay, I'm Oliver Crooms. I am from Charlotte, North. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, his signal's bad. So we're just going to get started. Um, I'm going to bring Oliver back in um, once he gets to just, oh, oh, wow. We have our another special guest who just came in, so it's a good thing we had that little bit of a delay. Uh, Sanford Green, artist extraordinaire. Sanford. Hey, how's it going? Hey. I'm sorry for, uh, I was trying to enter earlier, but um, it looks like the party was full and uh, oh, okay. couldn't, couldn't get in at that, at that moment, but uh, so we, we're really just doing intros right now. So actually, you made it in right on time. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you could just introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you're from, and um, what your creativity, what your art is. Uh, get right the discussion. Okay. Uh, the name's Sanford Green. Um, born, raised uh, in the great metropolis of uh, Greeleyville, South Carolina. Some of you guys might have heard of that before. Um, it's uh, not too far from Charleston. Um, and I am an illustrator uh, formerly at Marvel Entertainment and uh, currently working on a creator-owned series uh, called Bitter Root, uh, graphic novel series that is um, slated to become a film. So oh. glad to be here. And you, you, if you can, you gotta tell us more about that before we end. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, it's uh, about a family uh, in Harlem that hunts monsters, and um, these monsters are um, derived from this infection and this in, this uh, this in infestation. Um, is the root of it is based on um, hate, for more or less, and um, this family um, has to. Uh, preserve those who have been infected from it, um, or they have to go to other drastic measures um, if need be. Don't want to spoil too much of that, but uh, <laughs> they're, 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 um, their job is to, uh, uh, to, to fight these, these monsters and um, also hopefully um, save some, some folks from the infestation. Very cool. Thank you. I, and I know you might have to dip out a little early, so that's why I asked you to elaborate. So thank you mm -hmm. uh, for letting our audiences know a little bit more about your book, and hopefully you can catch it and see that movie soon. All right, everyone. So um, thank you all for being here. Once again, we're going to get deep into the discussion now, uh, switching up the order of questions a little bit. So, And this is actually inspired by, um, so a number of the producers for our work here that we're doing for the Carolinas for Sundance. So actually in this room right now, um, um, Travis and Andrew and um, Oliver, who's a little back and forth. Um, but it was Travis who actually came up with um, what I thought was a really brilliant like foray into even this whole discussion is really just about South, South Carolina specifically, but you know, bridging out from there to uh, the North Carolina, Georgia, everywhere really being the birthplace of the African-American story. Um, 
And so my first question really is like, what does that mean for any of you as black creatives? Um, like really living here and working here and being from here, um, being from a place where, you know, we were once enslaved Africans um, brought and processed and enslaved, um, but, you know, fought away to freedom, you know, and while there's so many injustices happening, you know, we're here on the forefront creating and presenting and preserving the art. So what does that mean for you to be from here and be as creatives working here in this region? Anyone can start. Well, um, I guess I'll just jump right in. Um, uh, one of my first films, which was my directorial debut, uh, was called What Matters. And uh, just thinking about, you know, what, what happens in society and the history that's here where I live in Colombia alone, you know, I live right here at the state, at the state capital. So I, I see firsthand a lot of events that happen, you know, like when the, when the KKK marched, you know, at the state capital and things like that. Like I got raw footage, not only raw footage, but raw experience. And then digging into those historical facts, you know, they, they play a heavy role into being able to tell these stories and not only just express how we feel through these stories and what so many other people feel, but I think it's integral as, as an artist um, for my growth and my advocacy because that's the way that I advocate to my people is through this medium. So uh, just that as an example, um, that's something that I, I always love to pay homage to is uh, just putting educational elements into every single film that I do. And any chance that I get to show some sort of um, advocacy or education or something that I can plant a seed to my audience, I always make sure that I do that. And I think that that's a blessing to be able to just recognize that here. Cool, thank you, man. Um, Tom, you look like you wanted to say something. Man. Were you, did you have Oh, well, yeah, no, I definitely can. Um, okay. Growing up in uh, North Carolina, and I mean, as you guys all have had your experiences, um, whether it be Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, et cetera, uh, they all kind of run a similar line and um, just kind of a, a similar um, theme, I guess you can say. Uh, starting out as an actor in Wilmington, because Wilmington, North Carolina is where I began my career uh, before LA and everything else. Um, and, you know, just getting in the business, you know, from North Carolina was hard enough. Uh, but then you start to see, you know, people think of entertainment or Hollywood uh, as a whole as, you know, that's an untouched, you know, region. You don't have to deal with racism. You don't have to deal with, um, you know, the any racial uh, issues. And as I discovered along my path is that's just simply not true. I mean, you're talking everything from casting to uh, the types of roles. I mean, just I've been now since I uh, started in 2005 uh, doing small films. And the difference I've seen in the industry just in my lifetime and in my career, which has, it's not like I have a, a 40, 50 year career like some yet, but just in my time, you know, I've seen the roles even change. When I first started, because for those of you who don't know, I'm six to five and built like a linebacker. So I'm a big dude, I'm a big actor. And so it's already hard enough to be casted uh, at my size, but you know, in the beginning, it was always just uh, bodyguards or uh, you know, bouncers and different things. But I'm a human being with a mind that I like to use and you know, guys my size have lives and so you have the, the element of size and the element of race and the types of roles you deal with writers who, you know, you, I'm the type of person I, I speak up, you know, if I don't agree with something, I don't care if it's a film set. Now I'm professional about it, of course, uh, but if, you know, sometimes you get these roles and then you, you're reading the script and you're like, hey, black people don't talk like this. And then <laughs> you have, yeah, and then you have a, 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 a Caucasian writer telling you, uh, well, no, this is the way we want the character to speak. You know, or a director, a Caucasian director telling you that this is the way we want it to go. And it's like, well, this is now your interpretation of what black people sound like, how we act, how we think, et cetera. But I'm black, I'm telling you, black people don't act like this or we don't talk like this. 
And so, you know, just dealing with those elements, dealing with, um, you know, casting directors telling you, the funniest thing to hear as an actor when you're in casting is when someone is someone who's not black is trying to politely tell you to act more black. And, <laughs> but they, a lot of times, more so now they'll just say it, but back then they would say, hey, can you, you know, act more black? They'll tell you, hey, can you, you know, a little more urban or a little more, it's like, dude, where are you getting at? <laughs> what it, just say what it is you feel. <laughs> and, you know, and then you're realizing that they're telling you, you're seeing their ideology or their POV of what they think Black people act like or speak like, et cetera, and trying to maneuver around that because I lost so many opportunities because I was that actor in the beginning who was like, I, you know, I would tell my agents, I lost agents and everything because they would want me to go for specific kinds of roles. And I would look at the role and say, I don't agree with that. Or I don't want to add to that. It's a caricature of a black person. And I don't want to do that role. I didn't want to, you know, you won't see me playing in my whole career. Yet. I don't have a record of playing any drug dealers or anything like that. And of course, I was offered, you know, all those kinds of roles, but I always passed on them, even when I was a nobody. And I didn't have any power in Hollywood. And you're like, who do you think you are, you know, just turning down these roles when you need them. Uh, fast forward to being a writer, I had the pleasure. I wrote a movie called Mr. Right. And uh, not the one with, you know, all the Caucasian people that went to theaters. This went out on own and uh, eventually BT, I believe. And uh, but I wrote that movie, and it was my goal to write a film about Black men and Black women that showed them having everyday life struggles and everything else like we all endure, but their lifestyles, like they had money, they had, you know, great careers, they were, you know, they, they were articulate, intelligent, and then dealing with romantic issues and stuff like that. So that, you know, I just wanted black people to be able to see projects that are done on high quality and they can see themselves being successful. Like the, the lead character is a, a novelist who, you know, becomes a bestseller, you know, different things like that to show, you know, hey, we have regular lives as well. We go through our struggles our battles, our heartbreaks, and this and that, but not all of us <laughs> are in a hood. Not all of us mm -hmm. are poor or uneducated and things like that. And so that was my goal to do that. And I was able to see that come to fruition. And so you deal with that. The higher up you go, I learned in Hollywood, uh, um, it's great to make steps. You know, I've made a lot of steps. But the higher up you go, the lighter it gets. And then more ideologies mm -hmm. of other people who don't understand your culture that you have to deal with. And as a producer, we're constantly battling like our casting decisions or the types of scripts that we want to do because some people feel that not everybody wants to see that. And yeah. I learned that when they say mainstream, they mean white America doesn't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that is mainstream is yeah, that's what they call real movie. Americans, what some people will yeah. call real Americans, right? Yeah, and <laughs> when they speak on black audience, yeah. they call it urban, the urban mm -hmm. audience. <laughs> And you learn those yeah, things, and you realize it's still a huge part of your our world, even in film. Absolutely, I, I know we have some writers, some other writers in the room as well. I would like you all to chime in on, on on the question about you know what being from here and 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 the history from here, what how that informs your work and everything. But also, kind of just like bridging off of what Andrew and Dominic just said um, about. Um, you know, misconceptions of who we are. I mean, I, especially, and, and I'm I'm a transplant here, to be fair, but but especially, you know, for so many of you who are like born and raised in the South or even near the South and been living here for a very, very long time, um, the misconceptions of, you know, what a Black Southern person is, you know, what are our loves and joys and, you know, all the things that make us human, but they try to portray as subhuman or, or you know, nonsense you know or stupid so um tangy would you like to answer that would you like to sure that? i would i'm not a um i'm not actually from south carolina okay. um ironically when i moved here i didn't realize that my mother was actually born here and um she actually grew up which is now taken over by usc um it used to be called black columbia oh. and it was where a lot of um the the black community actually lived. And so, um, but I tell stories and I don't do performery. 
Like I don't do stupidity. I don't do that. And I also don't do male bashing. So um, I believe in, um, I, I believe in writing stories that's going to change the world one production at a time. And so, but we got to get to our states. We got to get to our neighborhoods. We got to get to our household. And so that's kind of the stories that I kind of develop on what we really deal with um, and what are, what are our honest stories outside of the hood, outside of everybody being a drug dealer or, you know, an alcoholic or getting beat up. Like we're really dealing with some other issues um, that that is shared all the way around, and I think it's important to for us to write our stories and have our actors play our sh our characters, so that we can get to the honesty of it and use art to actually do what it's supposed to do, and that is to change lives, impact lives, cause people to think. If you're not doing something that is going to be impactful, then what are we doing? this for. And that's kind of what what's always been my motto. Um, and that's, you know, we if we're not affecting anything, then we are affecting everything. So I'm about to get like some some snaps some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think those those two points are, are really relevant to you know the beginning of the question. When we think about our ancestors and and what they went through, you know I believe they're still looking at us, you know, mm -hmm. even more so. And uh, just imagining them saying, you know, we went through all this and this is what you're doing with your opportunity. Right. So, um, and you have to make some hard choices. I really appreciate and respect, uh, you know, what, what both Tangie and Dominic said, because sometimes it means turning down a role or losing an agent. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just too easy to go, well, I guess that's what they want. So I'm going to do it. Um, and I understand the, the delicate balance of, you know, trying to pay the bills, too. But um, based on on, you know, again, the, the root of this question and who our ancestors are and what they went through, uh, it's our responsibility to them and to the generations ahead of us to uplift uh, what the definition of, of what it means to be black or brown. And I'll switch that into kind of the tech and behind the scenes. You know, I, I really want to get to know Bruce from down the street in Durham. Um, but I want to see more of us behind the camera in the, you know, DP role, in the edit suite, in the sound mixing suite, and not only on black content, right. but all content, because again, we're talking about sustainability and there are only so many, you know, uh, black stories on television and film, and we shouldn't be limited to that. You know, I should be able to do a film about someone climbing Mount Everest, you know, a white lady climbing Mount Everest because I'm a great sound mixer or because Bruce is a great DP. Um, so uh, expanding uh, you know, our roles is, is part of this as well. Um, Bruce, I'm gonna ask you to answer this question from another angle, but, but something you just said, Eric, um, just really hit me. Cause I remember somewhere in the early nineties, mid nineties or something, I remember uh, Bill Duke after he directed uh, Rage in Harlem, he directed the, Cemetery Club or something like that. And maybe I'm jacking the title up. But it was a film about these old white ladies and stuff, you know? And if you look at it from afar, even like a black person directed, I was like, but of course a black person can direct it because it's just the skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, meaning that the way we present ourselves, the way we represent ourselves is really just in the skill and the art of how we go about creating an energy we bring to it, not, you know, not having perceived imagery of who we are, who white people think we're supposed to be um, behind that lens. So that said, um, Bruce, with you being a cinematographer, I'd just like you to answer that question, this last question as well, and then we're gonna move on to the next one and have everyone else chime in, um, especially from literally from your vantage point where you know, you're know you literally behind the camera, you're filming and you're, you're bringing these beautiful images on screen. <laughs> Um, multiple images, whether they're, you know, black or white or whoever you're filming, but, you know, you're filming a lot of us too, right? So what does that mean for you? Like when, you know, when you think about, you know, our history in this region and such, and, and you're able to bring such beauty to the screen, like literally bring that beauty to the screen? Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, you know, I think growing up, it, it, it was sort of this weird relationship where, when you're from the South, so many of us um, are told as we're growing up that like, if you wanna be creative, 
you have to go to New York City, you know, you have to go to New LA, you have to go to uh, Miami, London, Paris, you know. Um, and so I remember um, in high school, I, I could want nothing more but to run away from this place. Um, and so luckily my mom wouldn't allow me to go to an out of state school. So I ended up applying to the North Carolina School of the Arts. Um, and then after that, of course, I quickly ran to New York uh, and then went to Los Angeles and San Francisco. But recently I moved back due to family issues, probably about four years ago. And um, after about a year of being, actually less than a year, I started to really want to take on the pride of being from here. And so I literally just started to let people know, like, if you want to, if you want me, you got to come find me in, in North Carolina. You know, and it was this sort of badge of honor that I would carry around with me, knowing that, like, in my off days, I'm not running around in Silver Lake trying to chase some new director. That in my off days, I'm fishing at Jordan Lake with my nephews. You know, I'm, you know, hanging out with my niece. You know, um, at one of her, you know, functions or whatever. And so, um, I I started to realize that being grounded in this sense led me to a more uh, dimensional perspective as a, as a cinematographer, just because of like, especially when it comes to filming black people um, within this environment in the South, I want to show now called Queen Sugar for Ava DuVernay. And like my whole time during the pandemic has like gave me so much inspiration as I shoot each frame on that show because I go to New Orleans and all I do is I sit out on the lawn and I'm just watching all these black bodies move. Some people get in front of the camera, um, some people are behind the camera and we're actually on slave grounds, you know? And I just think to myself, our ancestors couldn't be more proud of the fact that we're back here. Yeah, white people still own this plantation, but you know, we're here telling our stories on this ground where our ancestors picked cotton, you know, doing a show for a woman, um, Ava DuVernay, who's a powerhouse, and Oprah Winfrey, who obviously is a powerhouse. Um, and so I said it to say that, like, being here for the past four years has built me up stronger than I could have ever imagined um, being, you know, having spent time in Los Angeles and just always feeling like, oh, this place is just kind of temporary. It's like, well, what's home? Well, you know, this is it, but it's not really home. Same way in New York, you know, it's like, and and I and just to step back for a second, over the years after I realized so many people from the South run away when you're young, when you come to realize that's exactly what our ancestors did. Yeah. They were always running from the South. And then you find out all these famous, famous playwrights and jazz musicians and artists, and they all had ties in the South, many of them North Carolina. And they ran away to go make something better for themselves. And eventually either they came back or maybe they never came back, but you found out that like their roots and their origins are so, all of us black people, most of our origins are from the South. And so I think that um, embracing that has been something beautiful for me, you know, and I hope to continue that. Thank you for that. I mean, that's what we're talking about, like when we're talking about like birthplace, right? So, yeah. absolutely. I, um, can I piggyback on? Sure. What Bruce was, I mean, sure. when he was talking about, you know, leaving from the South to the North, um, like refugees, because <laughs> in my case, my father, he came from, you know, he was born in Leland, uh, Florida. Um, my grandmother left there because of the Rosewood. <laughs> she she was in that area, so she left and moved to to New York for a better life, you know, for her kids. And um, you know, here in Charleston, being in the South, I definitely try to. Uh, it's always been a fight to try to bring humanity into a character, um, into our stories, because you always, you know, for. A, for a large part, they look at black skin, either like a costume or a uniform. Mm. And so what we're trying to do is try to bring, um, what I try to do is try to bring, again, the humanity, um, show that we have universal stories that can touch, you know, just like they do. <laughs> but uh, it's been hard, it's been hard, especially in the South. But uh, mm. I, I refuse to stay here and try to 
because you know, like on this panel, there's plenty of talent here. It's just okay. building that infrastructure, and and hopefully we can you know do what they do in Atlanta and in New York and California. <laughs> we can do that in here in the South. And, and to your point, there's just ten of us in this room. You know, um, that's who was just invited here and everything. But I mean, obviously, there's tons much more of us. You know. Um, so with that, I mean, thank you all for those really beautiful answers. Um, and I want to go to Ronnie next, but I, I want to ask a different question. Um, bring off of all that is like for you, like what is your, what makes it distinct to be an artist here in the Carolinas? Um, like, what is it that, I mean, is it, I mean, we've been hearing these themes and things can come up about home and legacy and all that, but for you, like, what is it? Um, well, you know, it seems like no matter where I go, um, I end up having to kind of serve spirit, you know, it's just, it, it calls you, you come to a place for one reason and you find yourself, um, in a current, you know, um, and that's what happened to me. Um, like I said, there are seeds that can be planted for you to do the work that you're doing. Right. And when you return to them, you know, um, you find that there's opportunity. Like Bruce said, he went home and things open up. And so though I'm, this is a home for me, um, once I got here, I was able to make more work than I had in Atlanta, um, than I had in New York or LA, honestly. And I was able to make my own stories, you know, um, and kind of, and every year things doubled, you know? So when you see your own production value growing and you are in the sticks, watering your flowers, you know, living your whole black life, um, loving and all those things, and you can still do your art, you, you're in a good place, you know what I mean? Um, and so I, I would say that um, if something brings you to a place and things open up, that's where you're supposed to be. And so I feel like there's there was that energy for me here. Um, one of the early things that I got pulled into um, was after the floods. And um, I had been grieving like tremendously um, the Emmanuel, the Mother Emmanuel massacre, okay? These terrorists, let me be clear, okay? So we, we had all been grieving, honestly. Um, and when that flood came, something in me broke um, in a good way. Um, and it became clear that I was where I needed to be, you know. And so um, an opportunity came to make a film. And, you know, I pulled together people who were born in this soil um, to honor the, the, um, those beautiful spirits, you know, through movement. And so my question always is, is spirit being served? You know, um, on another kind of note, um, my personal story is, you know, excellence and black wealth and generational this and dope <laughs> as well. So um, I hope that people are able to see the humanity in my work, even though I completely embrace that our survival in this country has often been wrapped up in having to escape when your physical body can't leave a place, you know, when you are on somebody else's time clock, you know, um, all of the institutional racism that, um, that folks endure, we create a way out in many ways. And so I do talk about those stories, but that the spirit survives, you know, and I'm testimony to it, you know, so. It's so good to see y'all out here making work. I just had to give a moment. This is awesome. Thank you. And you, you're talking about that resilience, right? That that black resilience and that comes from having to survive so much crap, but it also comes from creating so much beauty yeah. out of so much crap, right? right. You know, um, I mean, that's everything. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Sanford and then Ollie, I want you to share the same. I know. Sanford um, as a comic book artist, I know most people like if they when they think of that, they kind of tend to think of um, 
you know, once again, going back to what everybody else is saying, you know, someone being New York or LA or, you know, one of the metropolises, uh, to use a word you used earlier. Um, so yeah, can you talk about, you know, creating here and living here? Um, yes. Um, artists here in the Carolinas? Yeah, man. Um, what everyone is saying right now is so rich because every every statement that was made thus far i felt at some point felt like bruce leaving here at one point like what 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 can i do in south carolina i have to go somewhere else then you know the full swing to the other spectrum where i feel like i have to be here um in order to to make some type of impression some type of impact that would um be um, transitional to to the next generation, if you will, because there are, you know, I'm sure for all of us, we've had people that have reached out to us that have shared what we're doing. We have watchers out there. We have people that are, that are observing what we do. Um, and that became empowering once you realize you're making an impact in that way, even though Sometimes you may feel isolated. That I think that was probably the, the biggest thing for me because there wasn't a whole lot of people like me in this area. But once I realized that what I was doing was making what I'm doing is making an impact, then I realized, you know, I can be the start of something more than the same transitions of leaving and maybe coming back maybe not um so that was um kind of the catalyst for me seeing the 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 power of being in south carolina and doing something was, that was very unique kind of a kind of a side note but at the same time kind of a a major point to what everyone is um speaking on um i graduated from a historical Black college, Benedict College here in South Carolina. So I'm even more entrenched in the culture of the Black experience in South, in the South, South Carolina specifically. And um, it became full circle with the, the transitions of graduating from this institution, uh, going off and, you know, um, making my profession happen and then taking that and giving it back bringing it bringing it back to uh specifically to the institution even right now i'm doing a master class to the underserved which is you know artists of color um because there's so many of us out there there's more than we can even imagine um in the south and they have what we consider as consider as low resources. We don't they don't have the <clears throat> the private institutes in New York or the School of Visual Arts or even uh, or even um, Savannah, you know, College of Art and Design. They just don't have the resources to to get into those institutions and and move forward. And I started to think, you know, here's an opportunity to meet this need. And um, it's, it's, from my knowledge, it's the only uh, program, masterclass of, of this caliber, you know, at an HBCU specifically in the country. And um, it's, it's just a part of, of that experience that I, that I got uh, a few years back when those who lived here reached out to me and expressed you know what I'm doing, what it what it meant to them. So, it in a in a in a way, it's like the black experience is as as much of a struggle as it can be being here um, at at that time. It became the very source of inspiration because people saw something that they'd never seen before actually transition here because you know. It is very common to see those who are successful, like everyone said, they they leave here and they go off um, elsewhere. But to see it happen, um, homegrown, if you will, 
um, was definitely um, a thing that people really felt uh, that connection with. And, um, and, and, you know, I felt empowered by that as well. Oh, thank you for that. Um, Oliver, I'm going to ask you to answer the same question about, you know, what makes it distinct to be an artist here in Carolinas. Um, but I want you to also speak on that if you can, um, from a curator's point of view. And I know you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself. There were some tech issues. So uh, if you could just introduce yourself to the audience, uh, say, you know, who you are, uh, what you do, where you're from, and, um, and dive right into that question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Oliver Crooms. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm the founder of Carolina Film Festival. I am um, from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm also uh, graduated from HBCU, Western Salem State University, and um, I'm just very excited to be here. Uh, what kept me in home here in the Carolinas and what inspires me all the time uh, it started from my childhood. Uh, my mom, I think I told Curtis this, I li literally the first day I met him that I grew up in church, uh, studios, and plays. <laughs> my mom is actually a Grammy, a two-time Grammy-nominated gospel artist. Uh, so are my uncles. Um, and I, um, my uncle, Donald Lawrence, he's a Grammy-winning artist as well. So I already, from a young age, knew that there's extreme talent already in the Carolinas, uh, just growing up, being around different musicians and singers and filmmakers. So I think what also kept me planted here at home is just all the greatness that's been around me and all the people that uh, are standing on their shoulders. And just every time I go out and meet people at different um, film community events, I mean, that's how I met Andrew. And that, that's how I met Trey. I mean, I met just different creative and amazing people here in the Carolinas that I feel like us just networking and getting together, we can make things special. We are already making great special things and it's putting the Carolinas on the map. So it's just that amazing talent and a synergy that I find here that keeps me here and excited to work on new projects. And um, that's it's pretty much my inspiration. I know it's a very short answer. It's just the amount of talent that's already here always drives me to keep going. No, that's fantastic, man. Thank you for, uh... Thank you for that and um, and for being here and for helping other artists like really thrive. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of what I, you know, I, I feel everyone in this room does is like really allow the space for um, us as artists here, us as creatives yeah. here to like help each other grow. Right. You know, I mean, that's a lot of what, you know, us coming together to do this panel, but even um, especially the ones here who are producers and other people who be prepared, appearing, excuse me, on other panels for us as well um that you know it's not just about us either you know it's about the history teaches us you know especially being here that you know you can't do it alone and shouldn't do it alone yeah. so um so thank you for elaborating on all that um we have a few minutes left um i do want to i think we're going to skip around a little and just ask about because we kind of delved into some of the other questions because we I wanted to talk about success and what success means to all of you. Um, and if anyone wants to elaborate on that, they can, but I think that question has actually been answered um, because it, success doesn't always mean what it means to be somewhere else in the other big cities and all that. It's, it's the life that you create for yourself, right? Um, but if anyone wants to expand on that, feel free to right now. I'd just like uh, to I'll pick up that. Bruce. Um, go ahead, Cameron. <clears throat> Oh, well, I'll keep my answer real short. Uh, for me, it's something that I, I realize I'm, I'm happy to be on this panel. I'm glad to hear everyone uh, sharing their experiences. Um, it, me as an artist, you know, I'm not gonna lie. You know, when I first, I worked so hard so long to get to a point where I could make a living wage in film. And so when I did start uh, getting some uh, notoriety and start getting bigger checks, you know, I went crazy and, you know, spending money on frivolous things. Uh, but when I started to learn the impact that what we do has, you know, or, or running into not just black people, but I mean, I'm black, so it's, it holds a little something more special when uh, <clears throat> some underprivileged kid or, you know, somebody that is an adult, but they didn't even think something like this was possible for them. And then they see me do it, especially people 
who I knew when I started out. And they look and they say, man, you really, you really did it. Like, you know, I'm going to take classes now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So I realized that the thing that became most important for me as far as what we consider success was our impact on other people, especially yeah. our people. And how what we do, even if we're not thinking about it, it opens the minds of other people who thought it was impossible. You know, when I started out, everyone was telling me it's impossible. You're six five. The actors are that big. At the time, we didn't have the rock. Sorry, we didn't have the rock. We didn't have Chris Hemsworth. A lot of really tall actors. Um, <clears throat> so you know, I was too big. I was too black. I was too not black enough. I was too <laughs> all these different things that everything just kept leading back to it's impossible. Uh, even my in the mentality of people, because even my own father, he didn't mean any harm, but he was a military man. And I never forget, I went to Atlanta for one of my first big auditions and I stayed at his house and when I was leaving, he said, he tried to give me the whole, you know, you know, only 3% of the people that get into this business actually make it. You need to be realistic, all of that good stuff. And I had to ignore a lot of naysayers and, and even people who didn't mean harm, but thought I was, you know, going down a path where I was gonna waste years of my life and uh, proved them wrong. But the, the thing that is uh, my favorite part of all of this is seeing those kids who now they see you and they say, oh, because, uh, you know, I'm not from a well-to-do family. You know, I came from projects and trailer parks and all of this stuff and got to a point to where people like me who come from those areas and who come from small towns in North Carolina or South Carolina and other places, especially Black people, can look and see like, he can do it, then why can't I do it? Or now I know it's possible to see somebody that I knew or used to see around, you know, hanging in the street, <laughs> actually get out there and do it and become successful at it. So the impact and reaching out to our people, I think has been the greatest part of success. Yeah, I just was gonna, you know, I love talking about the redefining success. And, you know, Bruce was naming earlier the ability to, you know, live here, do work, and then when he's off, go fishing with his nephew. Um, so I, I feel like success is a 360, it's, it's your complete life. And I think, you know, I know, uh, you know, having grown up here and lived in North Carolina all my life, um, you know, that that's possible. And, and I'm sure that's the case in South Carolina too. And there's this misconception that you have to give that up to be successful in this industry. And that's just not true. And it's, um, even more true or, or realized to be more true now during COVID where so much uh, production and post-production is being done remotely. Uh, now it's proven that, well, wait a minute, this industry can go on without everyone being in New York or Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that quality of life, and I serve on the governor's advisory council for film, television, and digital streaming. And we're trying to, someone mentioned earlier, just building an ecosystem where more people can be um, able to do this work and do it in a sustainable way and in a, in a life balanced uh, sort of way. And, um, you know, there's so many great uh, folks in the industry of all races that have ties to North Carolina or wish they could live in North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, so just proving that, um, you know, it's 2021, this, this work can be done elsewhere um, and, and uh, you know, allowing for a more complete life for everybody. That I think is true success. Can I say something too? Yes. Um, first of all, I love what uh, Dominique and Eric said, especially Dominique mentioned about um, uh, making an impact in people's lives. Uh, but I would say an another thing I would add for success for the Carolinas, um, there are, and I admit, there is dozens of different film festivals here. There are a lot of us. Uh, Andrew at uh, Carolina Film Network has one. I with Carolina Film Festival have one. But I think successful is uh, when people like Andrew and I are doing certain things, it catches the attentions of people around the world. And they say, oh, just like New York or Toronto, if there's something going on in the Carolinas, then I know it's professional. I know I'm going to learn something. I might see a few celebrities or two. You know, there's something special that's going on in the Carolinas. So uh, I'm not going to take the credit on my own. There's a lot of other festivals doing great things. But I want people to know, like, no matter what we're doing, because we are a team, we're bringing awareness all around the world. And I know Andrew, just like me, we're getting films from all over the world. So I want people to be like, oh, I want to I want to travel. I don't want to just submit, but I want to travel to these festivals in the Carolinas. And I think that would be successful for us. 
I just kind of want to piggyback off of that if I don't, if you don't mind. Um, with 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 me personally, um, and like I love what what Ali talked about, like with the things that we're doing with our film festivals. Um, I'm I I know in my intro I only said a very few things that I do, or a couple things that I do, but I actually take pride in the success that I have, and I actually feel as if we as a people should be more proud to speak on it. Um, so with that being said, I think that success, what to me success looks like is exclusivity. Like, I mean, I feel like I want to be able to show an economic impact that is self-sustaining as an artist, not just for myself, but for other people in a way that other people that we would look at as successful look to come to us as a resource. And I feel like that's it personally um, and collectively with all of the, the people that I've worked with, all the people that I've, I've met in this industry, whether it's our film festival, whether it's our uh, production company, whether it's our studio, whether it's our martial arts academy, we have a myriad of different resources that we've made self-sustaining. And it's notable to say that as a people, as a black person, or should I say a person of color in general in this industry, because that in itself is success. Doing something and seeing it through to the end is success. And not only seeing the end, but where people can see you just thrive even beyond that. Mm -hmm. And then see the, see you as a resource that they need. And it, and it makes me really excited when, and I'm just gonna give you a personal experience that happened to me. I'm actually the uh, first ever um, Hollywood level PGA producer ever registered with the South Carolina Film Commission in South Carolina. I'm the first one ever. And when that happened, I had, I had, for lack of a better word, I had white people knocking on my door. And that to me was showing success on my part. I'm being called, I'm getting emails from all these people that I looked at that were do, that were doing work longer than I have. They had all these accolades, these awards, all these things, but it made me wake up and realize, man, while they were counting these accolades, I was studying, I was researching, I was putting in the work, I was doing what I needed to do to make sure that the people around me ate good and that we were eating well together and we built ourselves up to make a strong foundation so that whenever we revealed the, the end result of the work that we were putting in, it was notable enough for people to go, that's what's up. Like that, that is what we need. Not only do we need it, but I need that face. I need the face of that hard work to be on my brand. Can I work with you? And then I had a choice. So to me, like I said, not it's not just about the accolades. It's about actually seeing stuff through, letting other people see the great work that you do it impacts other people, but for you to be a, a self-sustaining resource that other people other, that otherwise wouldn't look to, when they can look to you and say, that 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 is what I need and that's what I need in my repertoire. To me, that is success. To me, that is ultimate, ultimate success because that means that not only do I not only do I not have to put in as much work. But it just makes it all the more sweeter. So I, you know, I, I think, and I'm so thankful to know people like you all, to meet all of you people here, and just you know share this space with you all, hear what you have to say. Because again, that again shows to me more success for us as a people to even be on a platform like this. You know, being an extension of something that we look up to, that we would see like, man. When I first got into film, I was like, man, I want to be in Sundance. Sundance yeah. I want to be in Sundance. I want to be in, in all these other big time film festivals. And I'm like, man, can you imagine if I had a film festival the same level that they are? And then bam, I woke up one day with an international film festival. Man, can you imagine if I had a, a production company of my own? And then bam, I woke up with a business license. It's like, these, this is success. We don't need to redefine success. We don't need to define it for somebody else's eyes. We just need to recognize it. In my eyes, I just feel like we need to recognize it 
And seeing all you beautiful black faces right now, I'm recognizing. I'm recognizing it right now. You know, it, it, it's funny. I, I uh, Ava, Ava asked me that same question when she was uh, interviewing me to come on to her show. And I basically had two answers, you know, and one, the first answer was, well, there's the ego, right? And so it's like, well, what, what will, what will suffice for the ego? And the ego will always be hungry for um, exterior satisfaction or exterior praises. Um, and so I feel like, you know, if you can get rid of the ego, you know, and not be so worried about whether or not Hollywood has a space for you or New York or whoever, um, you start to realize how success is so easy, easily attainable because what your soul actually wants is something that you actually have control of right there in front of you. It's hiring, you know, the other local filmmakers in the community, um, having some interns um, and, you know, living within your means within that particular, um, you know, uh, place that you've settled at. And I feel like, uh, you know, once I got the ego out of the way, um, it became very apparent, like what success was for me, and that was actually coming on to do her show and building a relationship with her and other black filmmakers. Hmm. Go, now. Go ahead, Tangent. I'm sorry. I I actually um, believe that I have. It took me a long time to believe that I was successful, um, and it wasn't until um, me walking. Um, down a um, retail strip that a man came out of a barbershop and literally said, hey, I saw one of your plays and it made me mad, but it made me check myself. And now I have a, um, a relationship with now my seven-year-old son who I hadn't seen for five years. And so the show that I wrote, Confessions of a Good Man, was impactful. And that was the day that I began to say, you know what? I am successful. And, you know, it's almost a double edged sword because sometimes, you know, it's hard for me to find talent here, um, even though I know that it's here. But because of the quality um, and the in the spirit of excellence that we operate in, we have some people say, you know what, I'm not ready for that or I'm not ready for you um, or for your level. And so um, having this talent that's here to recognize that they also are talented. Um, to be able to come out to some of our productions and our films. Like right now I'm in the, we're in production actually. I got a rehearsal on this side um, on Zoom because we're in pre-production or we're filming right now, Secrets in Plain Sight. But it's um, it took me sometimes actually um, allow myself to measure my own success based upon the goals that I've set for myself. And now that I've gotten to that point, I am extremely successful. And to be even um, counted amongst all of you, you know, I'm I'm popping collars at this point in time. I'm good. <laughs> I I was gonna take a um, a slightly different approach to it because I think if we're being honest about um, us as a people. Because the, and maybe and I, I would suspect this is by design, there's only but so much room for us in film, um, in, in television, um, any of the fields of uh, entertainment. So the slots are few and there's a thousand of thousands of us trying to get in there at that, at one point in time. Yeah. And I think Success, once I started understanding that if you are, I guess, comfortable with someone else's success, mm. right? When you see someone who is in it just like you um, and they're making it and you feel genuinely happy for that person, um, or at least, you know, feeling inspired by that person. You don't, you don't necessarily have to be their biggest fan or cheerleader or what have you, but you see them making it and you just are inspired by that. I think that's, that's the beginning of success, in my opinion, because it is very challenging um, no matter what, what field to 
stay in uh, in your lane, if you will, and not let the other influences kind of um, distract you, if you will. Like you, 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 you want to uh, be aware of what's expected and in, in what's around you, but not be consumed by it, or at least not let it um, consume you in a way to where it um, deters you from your focus in, in reaching your goals. Let it, let it fuel you more than deter you, if that makes sense. So I think if the, the more that you're just looking at, you know, seeing what's possible, even if someone else, if it's through someone else's lens at that, at that moment, then, um, that is kind of the beginning because you're 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 kind of throwing off this this weight because a lot of times we can we can we can bring unwanted weight when it comes to um, trying to be successful. We're looking at and comparing what someone else is doing, and we let that kind of um, anchor us or or. or or you know, um, it kind of weighs us down. So I think the more we we look at that, like even everything that everyone is sharing here, um, is super inspiring, um, and and it's fuel. Honestly, I can go back and share this with you know my uh, community that you know there's a whole lot more out here in in the Carolinas or you know the surrounding areas than we realize, and really be. Uh, you know, kind of a, a voice for what's happening here, um, even more so. But I think th the more you start thinking like that, the more it's going to um, kind of give you that freedom to not be weighed down by what's someone else's success in, in comparing, if that, if that all makes sense. I think that's one of the benefits of, uh, of living in the Carolinas is that, you know, you're not comparing yourself to anyone else. You know, um, if you think of even like with the whole like hip hop movement, a lot of the uh, rappers and musicians that you hear coming out of North Carolina, they have something about them that's so original and um, and, and it's not competitive. Um, so I feel like, again, for me, that was one of the benefits for me staying here was that, like I said, I knew I didn't have to wake up and bump into a DP who I was competing with at Trader Joe's, you know, I knew the only time that I would actually have to worry about what someone else is doing or even compare myself and let the ego come out. The only time that would happen is if I tapped into social media. But other than that, it's like, you know, the thing that 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 so many people, once they attain success, wealth and just career rise, the first thing they try to do is to disappear, go get a house in Calabasas, you know, and it's just like, oh, you know, living in North Carolina, you know, you pretty much can do that on a extreme budget because, you know, no one's no one's here. Like, you know, it's not it's not the it's not congested with filmmakers, you know. And so on one hand, there's a benefit to actually having that much talent always around you, pushing you um, and having access to it. But at the same time, you know, if you can, again, move past the ego and again, dig deep within yourself to create instead of work trying to attach yourself to somebody else's vision, if you can create within yourself and then let the ego go, I think this is like a beautiful place to build. That's good. Cool. Thank can you I for that. I, I, I wanna, I'm oh, sorry, right, I just wanna, I just wanna hear from, from, from Ronnie for a minute um, mm -hmm. and then from Travis again, just cause I um, um, just wanna make sure everyone gets a minute to, to speak on some of these things. Um, but I just wanna say one quick thing before that, just like, Riffing off of what just Bruce Bruce just said, I was thinking about, and um, we had this discussion in one of our meetings uh, for the planning of all this. I remember Ronnie that um, my senior programmer Jackie, she's not with us in the room here, um, but a few years ago, I think it was 2017 or so, I sent her to Black Star, and she came back. Uh, your film, one of your films, was the first was the film that she spoke the most about, and this was the first time I had heard of you. It might have been 2016. This is the first time I had heard of your work, but I just remember her raving about it. When I finally got a chance to see your work, it it was like, okay, she, you know, it was, I mean, not that I didn't believe her, but I got to see it for myself. You know what I mean? 
And so for me, it's also just like how, and and someone had said it before, um, but it's also like, I think it was you, Dominic, uh, uh, the people that you inspire along the way is as much of a success as, you know, the work that you put out there and, and you know, whether you're, you know, whether it's something that's been only seen by a hundred people, it's about the people that it really impacts, right? Uh, for me, that's really what success is about. And even with the Luminal Theater, you know, we're a micro cinema, we're nomadic and we go different places and put on different things, um, even though we're, though we're always centered in blackness and always centered in making sure that the people who need to find these things are the people who are watching them. So I just want to have you um, and then Travis also speak on some of that um, and also what everyone else has been talking about as well. So please. That right there, like, listen, there is no audience in the world so far that I've been in and Bruce can attest, can I get an amen? Black Star <laughs> Film Festival, when your film screens in a audience full of us, you know, functioning at all levels, all levels, that that is success for me. The black gaze is success when my people get it. And everybody else can get it too, because it's universal. But my I feel fed when my people get it. And so that's that. Anyway, sorry, I know we moved on from the success question, but you just made me so happy to know she saw she saw the work in Philadelphia because um those ecosystems that y'all are talking about like it's so important because black film um I mean, we need we need these homes and we need them everywhere you know what i mean so it's important that we converge at places like black star at places like luminal like and then we go off and we do our work to build our audience where we are you know what i mean and that's kind of like that that to me is is the work. Um, remind me of the question because I started to get happy about Black Star and Bruce has his has poster up in the background too. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, well, he, knows, he knows like they feel it. They get they gasp. They get the jokes. They they know you know. And it's like and I know y'all know. And sometimes showing your work in an audience that doesn't understand it it's just different you know i'm not i i have wanted to go to sundance i claimed it i've been writing in this book i went to philly for their um for an institute uh for the experimental film and i just kept writing in a notebook you know and here it is you know what i mean i'm not in the snow i'm in my room like <laughs> i'm at home you know what i mean so um i really feel like it's super important for us to restore ourselves right now. We have to sow into our families, into ourselves, you know, because the energy, like Sanford said, there's a weight. He didn't want to call it the white gaze, but it's a weight. The comparison is, is there's not room, you know, like, or thinking about, will I make it? Because we have to feed our families. I, I teach, you know, so that I don't have to say yes to everything so that I'm not on anybody's set for 15 hours a day. I can't do it. I want to raise I want to raise my children, you know? LA didn't work for me. You know, it was as 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 beautiful as it was. Um you know, 12 hours in the studio editing, you know, sure so and so is coming in and celebrities and this and that and the third. We were miserable me and my kid, you know. So anyway, um I say all that to say um, I just, I think that this time is super important and I think that we need to relieve ourselves of the weight of who's watching. Tell your story, like CB said, because that's, that's going to be the way that we free ourselves from some of this stuff that we've been carrying. You know, we have to lay it down. We don't have to be, um, anybody's servant <laughs> any longer. We just don't, you know what I mean? Serve your community like y'all are doing. I'm so excited to see, you know, um, and I, I know some people who've been in your plays. Every time I'm like, I can't make it, but I must make it, you know, because um, 
I know how tough it is for us to keep our institutions alive. You know, um, we need to support one another in grant writing. You know, um, one thing, and I'll and I'll give up the mic then. Um, one of the greatest gifts that Black Star gave me. Um, shout out Mary Holmes, the founder. Um, was a closed door session with only filmmakers. And at that session was um, a programmer from Tribeca, a program, pro programmer from Sundance, um, from Creative Capital, okay? And we got told about ourselves. <laughs> like, this is why y'all are not getting the money. I, that conversation has, was like one of those break you down to build you up grandma moments, you know? Like, it was like, was the switch in the room? You know, it was like telling us if you want these pots of money, cause they are there, you know, there are certain things that people are filtering you at the door, you know, it's, it's crazy. But if you, um, if you find, this is where we have to kind of go like this and say, what's your strength? What's your strength? Let's bring all that together because all of these black stories matter. They really do, you know? the highs and the lows of it, you know? So anyway, also interns, yes. I train my crew. I just teach my friends how to make film, you know? Cause every, people are hella talented. Yep. Black people know how to do stuff. You got braiders, you got hair, you know, hair, makeup, wardrobe, uncontested, okay? Yep. Right there, you know? Um, my students shoot behind the scenes autographs until they move up to doing camera B, you know, like, so I think that it's important to build that ecosystem and then support it. So okay. passing the mic. I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> um, well, we're talking about success. Um, I, I would break it into, you know, the id and the ego. Um, my ego, um, the ego in me wants to bring attention to Charleston, South Carolina so much. I think it's the most beautiful city in, in the country. Um, um, I know a lot of people give New York and California and uh, New Orleans, uh, just a factoid, New Orleans architecture is based off of the architecture in Charleston. <laughs> just a, um, but um, I, I really want to do, do whatever, all I can to bring attention to the stories here. And because um, it's just so many stories here in Charleston and I just want to bring attention to that. The, the end of me, um, being bombarded by so much information, um, you know, from social media, um, from all the streaming services that you have it, when you're driving down the street everywhere, um, you, it's hard to, to hear your own voice, to, to, find, to see something, you see a reflection of, of yourself in it, to, to be inspired from and, um, what I'm trying, you know, is just shifting through all the noise to hear your own voice. Um, and that, that was what, what, I, my, what I've been trying to do constantly is just try to, uh, you know, just be still, you know, just do film, um, tell stories that are genuine and, and um, yeah, and hopefully, you know, by doing that, bring attention to my, the city I love. Cool, thank you, Travis. Uh, so we're went a little over on our time, which is fine. We're kind of slating an hour and 15 minutes anyway, but um, but I wanna give you all an opportunity to um, say any closing comments. I know a lot has been said and I'm so grateful and thankful of the talent that we've assembled here tonight. Thank you all again. Um, but do you all have any closing words about being a creative here on on what that definition or redefinition of, of Carolina film is, um, anything? Uh, yeah, anything? I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to add uh, something, especially listening to what uh, Bruce was saying as well as uh, Ronnie and others. Um, working in LA, I noticed a difference. I love coming back to uh, North Carolina to work on film stuff. In LA, it's very corporate. And those of you who have been in the LA system, you know, it's super corporate. There's no real uh, soul to you know how the business runs up there. 
Uh, even, you know, my business partner and I in 2019, we spent all of 2019 going to all the studios, all the networks, having meetings, learning how to get a TV show on air, how to make these deals happen from, you know, not secretaries, but from presidents, vice presidents, etc. I was fortunate enough that I could leverage my fame at the time into getting those meetings. And a lot of the people making the decisions at the top are not creative people. They're being counted. You know, um, so they don't really have that creative bone. They hire the people who bring the creativity. Coming to North Carolina, though, the thing about working with people in North Carolina is the love. You can still feel the love and passion mm. uh, that everyone still has in filmmaking. Now, I don't know if that's just because, you know, they're not, uh, not all of them are full time in the business, and some of them wish they could be, some of them are on a smaller level. Um, I haven't done much in South Carolina. I did shoot years ago a TV show, Palmetto Point Charleston. It is a very beautiful city, by the way. And and, um, and so, you know, as far as I think, uh, I can't remember who else was speaking on it. But one thing when I came back, I just have, have always had this thing, no matter what I did in L.A., no matter how successful I've become, I still always have wanted to come back to North Carolina and start programs and really kind of gin up you know this this film community as a lot of you know uh north carolina had a big film community until the senate was taken away and the sad thing that i watched happen was uh because there was no incentive a lot of filming stopped a lot of people moved to other places instead of going okay we need to now build an infrastructure you know that's one thing i will say georgia got it right on is when they had the opportunity they went to work quickly on an infrastructure. <clears throat> I remember the, the agents, agencies, the talent agencies in uh, Georgia formed a coalition. It had nothing to do with the state, but they formed a coalition, even though they were competition to each other. But they said to the film companies, come and hey, if you wanna come here and work in our state, you're not giving our talent good opportunities. You're bringing them on for the one-liners or extra things like that. If you want any of our talent that you need to hire locally, then you have to give some of our talent a shot at being one of the stars in the movie. So now Georgia had it to where, um, you know, you have to cast one of their people, a Georgia resident, as one of your stars if you want to film in Georgia. And that created so much power for Georgia and when it comes to the film business. Mm -hmm. creating, creating infrastructure is something that, I, you know, I don't know how it is in South Carolina and some of the other places you guys are, but I know here in North Carolina, that seemed to be something that has been very difficult to form a collective. I don't know if it's going to take like someone building a website where it shows you all the black filmmakers, all the cinematographers, the, the illustrators, the, the producers. I mean, I'm looking at you guys here. We have producers, writers, you know, directors, cinematographers, everything here just on this screen. To make a movie. And one of the things I also learned in this business is resources. I don't know those of us that know millionaires and billionaires and those kinds of people. Some people do, some people don't. The ones who do uh, need to, you know, figure out how to, pull, you know, corral those people in and then start, you know, collectively working with some of the other people. One of the things me and my business partner are working on right now, we got tired of running around talking to having, you know, meetings that go nowhere uh, with wealthy people who don't get the business or, or, you know, and I was trying to build out from, because I want to do North Carolina film where it's high level, real deal film, but funded by, you know, wealthy people out of North Carolina. So, they, and then it's shot, written, and worked on by people from North Carolina uh, or South Carolina. And that is truly, you know, actual Carolina film. And one of the things we're working on is instead of going to all these meetings, meetings we started going to financial managers and started having meetings about forming a venture capital fund that could be drawn off of, you know, every time we want to shoot a film. And maybe that's something uh, it, some of you listening might consider, or just some kind of collective thing. We go back to ecosystem. I love that word because I have other businesses and I'm always preaching ecosystem. Walmart got it right because they went from just a regular store. So then they said, we gotta make something where when you come, you stay and get all of your stuff from us. Or you come mm -hmm. for one thing and end up leaving with 12. So I hate going to Walmart because when I go there, <laughs> I go there for some hair gel and I'm coming out with, you know, bananas, you know, uh, 
other products, you know, that I didn't even intend to get. So ecosystem is a huge thing. And all of us are being connected. I can't see that I met any of you guys thus far. And I'm from North Carolina and started my film career in North Carolina. I've been out all around the world. And, you know, I feel like I'm so detached from a lot. Outside of Wilmington, I still know a lot of people in the Wilmington film community. But outside of that, I didn't even know there were people in Durham who were really uh, seriously working in film. I didn't know there were people in uh, Charlotte and other places that were really involved. Uh, so I think expanding that or maybe, like I said, forming some collective. I don't know if anybody here's website builders or something, but forming some kind of thing like Netflix is doing with uh, their huge push for diversity. And they've started making lists to make it easier for film producers of actual, you know, here are all your African-American filmmakers, gas, grips, electricians, DPs, et cetera. So you can't say that we just can't find them anymore. Now no. you have a list of these people who are all over that you can also pull from to diversify your films more. And I think something in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, it's always North Carolina and South Carolina. It's really all Carolina. Uh, we got love for South Carolina just as much as they have love for us. And, you know, I think just pulling in those resources, when you have the resources, one thing I can tell you about Hollywood is don't matter your color. Everybody will work with you when you're the one that has the resources. You're the one that has the money to make film and everything else. So forming some kind of ecosystem with, uh, you know, black bodies, those people, all the people involved and having a list that we can all go to and reach out to each other and say, hey, I know you do this, you know, uh, Sam, I know you're an illustrator and, you know, maybe you can, you know, help with X, Y, Z. And and also, you know, be a professional and, you know, building out, uh, pulling in those resources and saying, hey, this is my budget I'm working with, so I do want to take care of you. But, you know, maybe it's just something you want to help on. Or Bruce, you know, we're going to shoot this, you know, four minute film. We need a cinematographer. I'd rather have you than pull some random guy from somewhere else. You know, when I know you're right here in North Carolina. You know, all those types of things, the ecosystem. I love that. Is, that, is, that, is everyone familiar with Lana Garland? No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, um, Lana yeah. Garland from um, Hey Thai Film Festival. Absolutely, I was actually just watching her on a on on you know the Film X conference uh, just a little right before this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. She when I first moved back, um, I got in touch with her, and we have this sort of group uh, called the Hey Thai Black Filmmakers Collective, which is it's really just uh, Southern black filmmakers. Um, and we're trying to, I mean, it's impossible to know everybody. I mean, as, as crazy as it is, every day I'm finding that there's another black female cinematographer in the United States that I don't know. And I'm like, how the hell is that possible? And I think it's just, it's, a, it's just a matter of like, you're never going to know everybody. But as soon as we actually have some sort of home or, you know, which uh, the Hey Thai Black Filmmakers Collective serves as that right now. Um, you know, I feel like it, if you can just tap into that, there's a lot of resources in there. And I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things where there's a lot of people, but not not a lot of people are active. You know, again, it's North Carolina, so you know you could say, oh, hey, I'm doing I'm doing a commercial this weekend. Um, is anyone available? And it'll just be like crickets, like an email with like you know. 60 people and no one's responding and then a week later somebody's like hey is that commercial still going you know like you know <laughs> like so i say that there, there there is support um and the only way it's going to get better is the more of us who join and then those those of us who are very serious will know and we'll be able to take advantage of that of that of that group you know so again if you don't know lana um you know, if you want to send a, uh, a an attachment to the, I guess you know, I can just put the the information in the email that had us all attached, right? Yeah, and someone just saved it in the chat, and and oh. you know, Lana, we wanted her to be a part of something we're doing. She just her time was just um, unavailable for something else outside of this particular one because we're doing a lot of different events for Sundance. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I met Lana last year, and, and she's dope, and we uh, a lot of us. Some of us here know her and a lot of other people connected with what we're doing here do know her and um, have worked with her too. So 
And she can find money. <laughs> there you go. She's that kind of producer. <laughs> uh, Larry, she can find money. You know, it's like but you know, this is <laughs> and we do have to close out, but this all of us being here tonight, um, and still talking <laughs> is is part of that step in the right direction. And it's really about yeah. taking that energy and moving with it. Um I know Andrew, with his work that he does with uh, Carolina Film Network, you know, really brings a lot of filmmakers together here in Columbia and here in the Carolinas, period, actually. Um, so I wasn't trying to limit you, Andrew, so excuse me. Um, but you know, we wanted this. And even like, so when we were planning, even specifically this discussion, but just planning everything we're doing for Sundance in a whole, um, I was telling the team that, you know, the thing is that you know, having Sundance here is really just kind of an excuse for us to do the things that we're already supposed to be doing, you know? So we all need to start coming together a lot more and, and talking and planning and, and working with each other in stronger and better ways and communicating, actually, which is the first step in that direction and, and having it be organized to do so. So um, hopefully this is not hopefully this is the first of many 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 conversations we can be having and moving forth with some action and some you know um desired outcomes for making that happen and you know let's let's make it happen y'all let's just do it you know step one step two and then success right that's what we're talking about so so yeah so i do want to close out i i i know some folks do have to go too although everyone is having a really good time chatting with each other and we will definitely share our information you all already doing a chat but i'll i'll share <laughs> i'll share your emails and all that with everybody here if that's cool and um thank you just thank you all for being here and, and lending so much of this conversation it's dope um we have to do it again we don't need sundance to do it you know like i said well, it's the, it's right the, it's the impetus but but the start of the future right so um thank you all thank you all again for being a part of this conversation um there's so much more that we're gonna do uh, with this and more but even with sundance um um, we're going to have a works in progress uh, discussion and 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 get feedback from audience with uh, okay. with Ronnie and uh, with another filmmaker as well from North Carolina. So uh, make sure to check that out. It's on our calendar, so um, you can't miss it. That's going to be live. That's this discussion is taped, and we're actually going to have like a little follow up thing after, so people can chime in um, about people that weren't able to be part of this conversation can chime in and and, and give their opinions on what was spoken about. Um, but there's so much more. So, you know, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, audience members who um, are watching this and um, let us know what you think. And we'll also be sharing everyone's uh, social media um, with everyone. So they'll be able to get a chance to, awesome. and websites and all this, will be able to get a chance to check out all of you and make sure they know your work and connect with you, uh, whether that's, you know, on a technical side or a creative side. and. Um, we're going to make that happen, all right? So thank you all oh. again, and um, this was dope. Thank you, Curtis, for being oh. our fearless leader. You, you, you rocked it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A shout thank out to Sundance for making a space <laughs> like this available. Um, Absolutely. You know, it didn't have to happen, so I right. really appreciate them for, for doing this. Oh, thank you for that, Eric. Thank you, everybody. And um, oh. let's, let's, like I said, let's just keep making this happen, all right? Awesome. Be great. Oh, all awesome. right. Y'all. See you guys soon. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Have a good night. Bye, Ronnie. <laughs> I'm Ruth. Ruth.